Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I said already, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3, um, we are, it, Col Colossians chapter 3 is, is brilliant. It's a letter from Paul to the church in Colossae, um, and Colossians chapter 3 is awesome, and we're only going to focus in on verse 16. That's it. That's all we're going today. We're going to dissect it um, four or five different ways today. Um, but I, uh, if you haven't already heard, today's emphasis is God's Word, the Bible. If you don't have a Bible, please leave here with one in your hand. There should be some on the pockets in front of the chair, the chairs in front of you. Um, there are stacks of it on the way out of here. Um, I have some in my office if you want to steal those. Um, if you don't have any kind of Bible app downloaded onto your phone, if you have a smartphone, because I know some of you don't have as smart of phones, um, download it, like, the Bible. God's Word is so accessible for us today. And so do whatever it takes to put it where it's in front of you all day, all week, all month long. Um, the Bible is in front of us today. Um, let me say this as you're also turning to Colossians chapter 3, hopefully. Um, I got a flat tire yesterday. Uh, and it was awesome. Thank you, by the way, for taking the daughters home. Julia took the daughters home as I changed the flat tire. Um, but um, here's what made it awesome. Um, thank you, Robert Contreras, my father. Some of you met. He was here last week for teaching me how to change a flat tire. Because it only took about 10 minutes, if that. Like, not only did my father equip me to teach me how to change a flat tire, but all, thank you Subaru for having all the pieces of what I needed. The spare tire was there, the jack was there. I don't know what it's called, that thing that fits in the jack that you use. Is that called something? Crank, did somebody say crank? Love uh, there was a lug wrench maybe. Yeah, it took the, the star bolt off. Like everything was there and in no time, like I changed the tire, I drove to discount tire, I had it changed. Um, Two hours later, it was ready, and it was like actually three hours later. They were busy, um, but it, my tire is back on the car, and like I'm good to go. I was well equipped to change the tire yesterday, which is a timely message to me in this series that we're in for the month of August. To know everything changes tomorrow, ready or not. Here it is, like. The blinking lights are on Broadway tomorrow because Alma High School District is in session. Tuesday, my, Hannah's a teacher in San Antonio, so Tuesday, uh, everything changes for her as students are on her campus. Maybe you're already started at homeschool, university, Mitch is out of here. I don't know when Amalia is out of here. I know we have students already on their university campuses. We have some professors, we have some teachers. Everything changes in this season, but as parents, students, teachers, professors, when we exhale and pause long enough to be equipped for what God has in store. Like, we answer the question, how are you? I'm great. Not really, but I'm great. But we get so wrapped up in the season. Like, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I, I know what you're feeling because yesterday, Hannah and I stood at our calendar October 29th, which is a Saturday, and all the Saturdays in November, booked, done. Like they are already planned, and we know what's happening on those, on those November Saturdays and October Saturdays, whether we like it or not. But what we can do also is to be ready for it. And one of the best ways to be ready is to immerse ourselves and our families in God's Word. That we would not lose sight and the chaos and the, uh, the, the pace that is set by the school districts that we are a part of and our kids' schedule and our schedules. That we would slow down long enough to be about immersing ourselves and each other in God's work. Because if we don't do that, it'll be even more of a mess. And so equipped to go today is for us to see the importance 
be in God's Word, to be equipped. The dictionary uh, defines equipped this way, to furnish with intellectual or emotional resources, to be prepared intellectually or emotionally. We are throwing that definition out the window today to say this, that I want us to be equipped by the definition set before by God in His Word. And we find that in Colossians 3, verse 16. So if you're there, open your Bibles. If not, Colossians 3, 16 says this. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Now, how many of you just read that out of your Bible? I mean, don't be shy. Okay, let's read it together. Ready? And I know I just read it out of the ESV, so I don't know what translation you have, but we're going to read it together. You ready? Okay, are you ready? Yes? Yes? Okay, good. Thank you for joining me today. Colossians 3.16. Ready? One, two, three. Let the Word of in front of a group of people, and I had never heard this before, but they called it in concert. Let's have a prayer in concert. Let's have a scripture reading in concert. Has anybody ever heard that before? Like, I didn't know what that meant. Like, I just was going to show up and speak, and then they said, that it's when everybody just reads or prays, like, out loud together in concert, and it's beautiful. As we're reading God's word in concert, I, I, I want to break this, I want to break this down a bit. Because the word of Christ, the gospel message found in the 66 books that are in our Bibles, is extremely vital. It's life-giving. We will survive with God's word as our guide in life. Charles Spurgeon and A.W. Tozer are two um, uh, theologians that are favorites of mine. And Charles Spurgeon says this, Nobody ever outgrows scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. Like if you think, like I do at times, I've been in church my whole life, I've made it, I've arrived. Nobody ever outgrows scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. A.W. Tozer said this, regarding God's word, let us love it, live it, eat it, drink it. Let us lie down on it, walk on it, stand on it, swear by it, live by it, and rest in it. So how are you, how are we with God's Word today? If we're going to ask, how are you, how are we with God's Word? How about a quiz? You guys good for the quiz today? Yeah? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're ready for a quiz. Okay, here we go. Um, I have 20 questions. I hope you're ready. Now, I don't know if you've got paper to write down, or if you want to write down the answers on your phone, or if you're just going to remember all 20 of them. Um, but here is a good Bible quiz. Um, there is a podcast that I love to listen to, and it's all about walking slowly through God's Word. And about a year ago, um, on this podcast, they gave this 20-question quiz and I failed, but I've been studying, and I hope you failed to do today too, because it's a humbling experience. Okay, you ready? Here it is. Twenty questions. I'm going to go through the questions, and then we'll come back and answer them, and, and see how we do. Number one: Name the first three Israelite kings. Name the first three Israelite kings. I'm going to go quick, so don't get upset with me. Where did Jesus grow up? Who lived in Ur and moved to a country he did not know? What occupation, what are the occupations or were the occupations of Cain and Abel? Who prophesies, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given? How many books are in the Bible? I already gave you that one. <laughs> 
How many years of famine did Joseph prophesy to the Pharaohs? What is Noah's first act when he emerged from the ark? How many of you are feeling nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Who were the sons of Zebedee? If you were here last Sunday and paid attention, you should know that one. Shame on you. How many people were saved on the ark? <laughs> Come on, Kenny. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it was awesome, Kenny. Who said to whom? Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Who said to whom? What type of animal did Balaam ride? No King James Version. Who commanded, who commanded the sun and the moon to stand still? Which of Jesus' miracles are recorded in all four Gospels? What is the other name for Mount Horeb? What were the names of the mother and grandmother of Jacob? Which two men are recorded of having not died? Last two. Who made the golden calf? And which disciple found a coin in the mouth of a fish? Woo. If you think you passed, come sit on this side. If you think you failed, come sit on that. All right, you ready? Uh, like Kenny, let's just yell them out. Ready? Name the first three Israelite kings. Saul, David, and Saul, David, and, Saul, David, and Solomon. All right, good. Where did Jesus grow up? Nazareth. Good. Who lived in Ur and moved to a country he did not know? Abram or Abraham. Good. What were the occupations of Cain and Abel? Farmer and shepherd. Who prophesied? For unto a child is, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Okay. Isaiah. How many books in the Bible? Sixty-six. Okay. How many years of famine did Joseph prophesy to the pharaohs? Seven. Yeah? Okay. What was Noah's first act when he emerged from the ark? Built an altar and made a sacrifice. Good. Who were the, excuse me, who were the sons of Zebedee? James and John. Good. Kenny, how many people were saved? Hey! Yeah. Kenny's on it. Uh, who said to whom? Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God to Samuel. Good. Uh, what type of animal did Balaam ride? What type of animal talked? Yeah, that's right, cool. Who commanded the sun and the moon to stand still? Joshua. Uh, what miracle, which of Jesus' miracles in all four? Feeding of the 5,000. What was the other name for Mount Horeb? Sinai. Good. Mount Sinai. What were the names of the mother and the grandmother of Jacob? Rebecca and Sarah. Rebecca and Sarah. Uh, uh, which two men didn't die? Enoch, Elisha. Okay. Last two. Who made the golden calf? Starts with A. A. Aaron. Okay. And then who was the disciple that found the coin and the fish? Peter, good, awesome. Okay, how many of you were good? You felt good, like you did well. Okay, he's at Bible college, come on. How many of you feel like, I need to read my Bible some more? Okay, good, that's where I felt too, that's okay. There's no shame. You will not get this quiz at the pearly gates. Like, you're not going to get quizzed when you die. Like, well done, my good and faithful servant, let me see your test, right? Like, it's not, it's not going to happen, like, but this is humbling. It's humbling. And, and here's the thing. Um, we by no means are saying that um, take this quiz home because I'm going to be quizzed a month from now and this is going to make me a better Bible reader. No, A.W. Tozer said it for us. No, we want to live it, love it, eat it, drink it, lie down on it, walk on it, stand on it, swear by it. <laughs> 
the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. First and foremost, and, and there are a number of things that I want us to see this morning as we open our Bibles day in and day out, as we seek to be better equipped with God's Word as a guide for us individually, for us corporately, for our families. Number one, let the Word. Well, what is the Word? The Word is God's Word. It's our Bibles. Uh, uh, Paul writes to Timothy. We looked at Paul speaking and writing to Timothy last week. And in, in 2 Timothy 3.16, have you ever wondered, because we're reading Colossians 3.16, we're going to look at 2 Timothy 3.16. Have you ever gone and see all the 3.16s, John 3.16? No? Am I the only one that's ever done that? Geeked out? <laughs> Try it. I dare you to do it this week from Genesis to Revelation 3.16. See what you find. Good luck. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable. So, um, total scripture, all scripture is God's breath given to us. As important as the breath to keep us going alive in and out of our lungs is the breath of God given to us by His Word to keep life in and out of our bodies. All Scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable. There is extreme profit and this is it for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. We talked about training last week and hopefully you've continued to go to the gym of your faith to work out because it's profitable. It's training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We need God's word. He, he breathes life into us daily. Uh, uh, we've heard it said this way, a breath of fresh air. When I walked out of the house this morning and I walked to work, because I walk to work every day, there was a bit of a breeze. It was a nice breeze. It was a bit cool this morning. Not like extremely cool, but it was nice. But I, I don't know about you, but I need that every morning from my Creator God to, to breathe His fresh air life into me. To be equipped. To teach me. To reprove, to rebuke what's wrong inside of me. And to correct that. And then to train me that I would be equipped and complete in righteousness for His name's sake. We all need that. Number two, it's the word of who? Christ. Here's what's interesting. Uh, Lena and I had an Old Testament professor who, who took um, um, us through this uh, Old Testament uh, study. And he's, he used this 2 Timothy 3.16. Um, all scripture is breathed out by God. And as Paul was writing this to Timothy, he pointed out that um, the New Testament wasn't around. It was the Old Testament. And again, we hear that let the word of Christ the Bible isn't just about the Bible as a book. It's about Christ. It's about Jesus. Um, uh, you don't have to turn there, but um, um, I um, I want to read Luke 24 here in a little bit uh, because we see this play out. But um, I received a birthday card uh, last week, and in this birthday card, I'd never had this done before. Um, in this birthday card, it didn't say happy birthday. It said, will you buy me a Bible? It's my birthday. <laughs> no, seriously, this birthday card that I got, I'll tell you this too. Um, it was by a sixth grader who wrote me a card that said, would you buy me a Bible? And so I did. Not for the sake of this sixth grader to have a Bible, 
but for the sake of this sixth grader, to know who the Bible is speaking of, and that's his Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, Luke 24, we get this insight of Jesus after he's come back to life from the dead, and he's walking with his disciples, but they're kept from knowing him. Maybe you've read it and you're familiar with this passage. Jesus asks them as they're walking on the road to Emmaus, what are you discussing so intently as you walk? They stopped. Sadden, sadness was across their faces. And then one of them replied to Jesus, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all these things that have happened. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They said he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and the other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. And what is worse is that some women from our group were at the tomb early this morning. And they came back with this amazing report that his body was missing. Jesus said to them, and Jesus said to us when we think of the Bible as just a book, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all the prophets wrote in scriptures. Wasn't it clear? Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things to enter his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scripture things concerning himself. This scripture has got read. It's given not to be just binded in a book for the sake of a book, but to point to Jesus. And Jesus did it in that moment. They said, why don't you, don't go a little further, come with us as they arrived to Emmaus, come into my house, and as they broke bread, they realized that it was Jesus, and then he disappears. But then they begin to reflect, weren't our hearts burning when he was explaining all these things concerning himself? It is, Jesus was walking through Moses, the prophets, Pointing to scripture concerning himself. Weren't our hearts burning? <clears throat> As we open our Bibles, would our hearts burn? Knowing that seared inside of us is God breathing his words of life to us. And we need it day in and day out. But the word, God's word of Christ, do what? Glad you asked. Number three, dwell in you. Dwell in you. This is literally make it home. Let the word of Christ make its home in you. How, how many of you, like me, could get to the front door of your house, have it open, close your eyes, blindfold, can't see a thing? How many of you can walk through successfully through your house? Yeah. Kind of a creepy question, but how many of you could be blindfolded, can't see a thing, taken to someone else's house, and you can walk through it successfully? No? I mean, I probably could get around. Like, I've been to Layton's house enough. Like, like, I could probably get through, right? How many of you could blindfold yourself and not can't see anything but completely walk through successfully the house you grew up in? I could. 10312 Luella in El Paso, Texas. Like, I could, I could, like, I could do it right now. I could walk you through. Literally. We should be immersing ourselves that we would dwell in God's word in such a way that we can blindfold ourselves and in the darkest of times walk through, not by the world's standards, but by scripture standards, successfully walk through because we've made home in it. Bible verses. 
have as home in our hearts. I'm going to give you some. All thanks to Frank because he bought me a book about seven years ago. The 100 verses everyone should know. Exodus 34, 6. The Lord passes before him and proclaims, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 105, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness is to all generations. Lamentations 22, 23, the steadfast love of our Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. Romans 8, 31, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who did, who, he, who did not spare his own son? Sorry, words are hard. <laughs> he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also with him graciously give all things? For we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 James 4, 17, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. 1 John 1, 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions, for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his wounds, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 6. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. Romans 5, 6. For while we were still weak, while we were still sinners, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5, 8. But God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ's word will not dwell in us unless we dwell in him. Make your home, make our home in him today. There's kind of like a point A to this part right here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. That word you is plural. That it's, it's Paul writing to the church in Colossae. It's Paul writing to them and for us to read too that that you is y'all. Right? It's let the word of Christ dwell in y'all. Like say it with me. Dwell in y'all. Yeah, that's so good. Welcome to Texas. It's, it's plural. This is we must do this together. Like, we are not alone in this. Like, we look around this place, they, they don't give up meeting together. Not because the church needs to be open, the AC needs to be on, and we need to be, no, because we have the opportunity to allow God's Word to dwell in us together, corporately. And so, um, um, tonight, my family is going to sit around the table because the first day starts tomorrow for our daughters. And we have this big calendar that's on the fridge. And we're going to choose a Bible verse that goes on that calendar for us to see all week. Because it's dwell in y'all for my family. And so I don't know who you have to do that with tonight, but do it with them. Choose a verse. It's yours this week. I don't know who you have to call. I don't know who you have to text. I don't know who you have to you email. Email them. Dwell in y'all. Plural. And we do this also as we gather. We, we don't forsake the gathering by doing these things together. We sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankfulness. We read and, and, and it, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts. And if we, let's just for the sake of reading verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do 
everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, the Father, through him. All that we do, together, we do in his name and for his name's sake. Because we're equipped. We're equipped individually and we're equipped together. One last way to break it down. I forgot a word. You know what that word is? Number four? Richly. Let the word of God, the word of Christ dwell in y'all richly. Uh, this is my Bible from sixth grade. Uh, I keep it in my bookshelf. I don't use it as often as I do. Partly because the words are getting smaller. <laughs> so, so funny. But um, I can explain to you why it looks like hot chocolate was spilled on it. Because it was. It's, it's been to summer camps. It's been to missions trips to Mexico. It's been to Ecuador and back. Um, I've heard it said this way, um, when someone's life is falling apart, might be an awkward question, but ask them to see their Bible. Because if their Bible is falling apart too, they're going to be okay. We should be wearing these things out, because when the world around us, in the circumstances we find ourselves in, is falling apart, if we're wearing this thing out and it looks like it's falling apart too, we're going to be okay. Not by the world's standards, but by God's. It'll dwell in us richly. Uh, Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, there it is, he leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, and what? My cup overflows. That's what richly means. My cup overflows and surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will what? Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We dwell now. And we dwell tomorrow. And we dwell forever. Because we are rich. Rich in the economy of Jesus. Because we are immersing ourselves. We are making home in his word. And on his word. And with his word. Every day. So, I have a challenge for us. It's really simple. Bible before phone this week. And if it's not the phone, Bible before you fill in the blank. Seven days. See how we do when we come back? There'll be another quiz. <laughs> Just kidding. No more. This week, dwell. Make your home. Make our home together in His Word. Bible before, whatever it is. If it's in the morning for you, because that's a healthy time for you to get up early and do it, do it then. If it's noon, if it's evening, somewhere in between. By yourself, with others, because it's y'all, y'all. Would we make our home this week? Pick one verse, pick two verses. Um, Hannah and the daughters uh, made these index cards in there. Um, I think it's Psalm 4110, Psalm, Psalm 4010, 4110, that they picked it there on. Ella's like, I don't know, why are you looking at me? <laughs> pick one, pick seven. Read it all. I don't know. If you started a Bible reading plan and you've dropped off, pick it back up. No judgment. Bible before fill in the blank. 
But would we make our home this week? And would we do it together? Pray with me. Father God, thank you. Thank you for giving us your breath that is your word. And would you forgive us for the times, even now, that we've taken it for granted. God, your word is so accessible to us. We have your word right in front of us. And forgive us for not making home in it. And so give us a boldness, give us a courage, give us the energy for morning, noon, evening, everywhere in between that we would find ourselves making home in your word. That it would teach us and correct us. That it would stretch us and grow us. That it would lead us and guide us. That it would strengthen us, mend us, heal us. God, would we share it because it's for all of us together as we gather in this place, as we gather together in homes and at our schools and at our jobs. Would we do whatever it takes to immerse ourselves and each other in your word this week? God, would there be, would there be awesome testimony of how you use your word to do these things this week? And would we celebrate that together as we come back? And this is all for your glory, Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah, our King. That's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a super week. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Bye.